Your Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, the grounds for your proposed removal from office by impeachment, as received by the Senate from the National Assembly, are as follows. Part A, gross violation of the Constitution or any other law pursuant to Article 51B1 of the Constitution. Ground one, violation, gross violation of Articles 10, 2A, B, and C, 27, 4, 73, 1A, and 2B, 75, 1C, and 129, 2 of the Constitution, and Articles 147, 1, as read with Article 132, 131, 2C, and D of the Constitution. The preamble of the Constitution provides, among other things, that the people of Kenya adopted and enacted it, A, being proud of the ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity, and a determination to live in peace and unity as one indivisible sovereign nation, and B, recognizing the aspirations of all Kenyans for a government based on the essential values of human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, social justice, and the rule of law. The preamble of the Constitution is supplemented by Article 10, 2A, B, and C of the Constitution, which establishes the core national values and principles of governance that bind all state officers, including the Deputy President. These values and principles include patriotism, human dignity, national unity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, non-discrimination, equality, human rights, protection of the marginalized, democracy, and good governance. Moreover, Articles 73, 1A, and 2B of the Constitution establish responsibilities of leadership. They provide that the authority assigned to a state officer, such as the Deputy President, is a public trust to be exercised in a manner that is consistent with the purpose and objects of the Constitution, demonstrates respect for the people, brings honor to the nation and dignity to the office, and promotes public confidence in the integrity of the office. Also, Article 27.4 of the Constitution prohibits all forms of discrimination, including discrimination based on ethnic or social origin, conscience, belief, language, and birth. Further, Article 73.2b of the Constitution provides that decision-making should be objective and impartial and should not be influenced by favoritism and improper motives. Furthermore, Article 75.1c of the Constitution provides that a state officer should behave, whether in public and official life, in private life, or in association with other persons, in a manner that avoids demeaning the office he holds. Therefore, as a matter of constitutional compliance, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, who is the principal assistant to the President of the Republic, is required, A, to promote the constitutional core values such as peace and unity of all Kenyans in the context of ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity, patriotism, national unity, rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, human rights, non-discrimination, and protection of the marginalized and good governance. B, to respect and uphold representation of Kenya's multi-ethnic and culturally diverse society through the promotion of equality and affording equal opportunities to all Kenyans in appointments to the public service and allocation of public resources and C, to make, promote, and implement public policy decisions that do not discriminate against any Kenyan based on conscience, ethnic or social origin, language, or birth. However, on diverse dates throughout the last two years, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa 
has persistently made utterances threatening to discriminate, exclude, and unlawfully deny sections of the people of Kenya and regions of the Republic of Kenya equal opportunities for public service appointments and allocation of public resources. Besides, the utterances are highly inflammatory and insightful and significantly undermine national unity and the peaceful coexistence of Kenya's diverse communities. To illustrate, A, sometime in 2023, at a public forum in Kajiado County within the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made highly inflammatory and insightful public pronouncements to the effect that the government of Kenya is a company and that the allocation of government development projects and public sector jobs are based on shares determined by how the populace of the various ethnic communities voted in the 2022 general election. Specifically, he stated as follows, quote, a government is like a company. There is shareholding. Kunawale who have invested a lot of shares, kunawale wameweka kidogo, kunawale wamekata, lakini wote ni wa Kenya. So ndio tukasema, kama wewe umeenda kupanda mahindi, ama wacha nipeane example ya ngombe, kwa sababu niko kajiado. Wewe uko na ngombe yako ya maziwa, hiyo ngombe imezaliwa ikiwa njao. Umeichunga vizuri. Umepatia majani. Umenunulia daily meal. Umepatia chumvi. Umepeleka kwa malisho. Umepatia maji. Imeza. Imeanza kukamuliwa. Wewe unatakiwa kwanza ukue mtu ya kwanza kukamua hiyo ngombe na kunywa maziwa. End of quote. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa emphasized the divisive and insightful narrative embodied in the above utterances as follows. Quote, Haiwezikani mtu ambaye alikuwa anakupigia kelele ukichunga hii ngombe na kusema hii ngombe ni ile ya kienyeji hakuna haja ya, kushuguliki, ya kushugulika nae. Hii ngombe ni bure, haiwezi kutoa maziwa. Hii ngombe ata ikipona jicho moja, wachana nayo, unapoteza wakati. Saile ngombe imezaa, imetoa maziwa, amekuja na kikombe, amekuja na sufuria, anataka atolewe maziwa. Mimi nikasema hiyo haiwezekani. Nikasema yule mwenye hii ngombe na kuichunga na kuitunza kwanza akamue maziwa. Yeye na watoto wake wakunywe. Ile itabaki aitie majirani. Hata yule alikuwa anapiga kelele akisema hii ngombe ni bure na haiwezekani kama kunayo imebaki pia apewe kama hakuna imebaki atembee si namna hiyo end of quote His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa made similar remarks at another public forum as follows quote a government is like a company i did not say it is a company I said it is like a company. In every company, there are shares, preferential shares and ordinary shares. When there is an AGM, non-shareholders do not vote or attend the AGM. When there are dividends to be divided, they are divided according to the number of shares. That is the truth. End of quote. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa continued the insightful and divisive utterances at yet another forum where he stated as follows, quote, Silazima tungeangalia nyinyi, si silazima tungeangalia nyinyi. Hii serikali ni kampuni na ni ashares. Sindio, ni ashares. Kuna wenye kampuni, wale wako na shares mingi, wale wako na chache. Kuna wale hawana. Sasa nyinyi muli invest kwa hii kampuni ya William Ruto na Rigathi Gashagwa. Sasa lazima mvune. Yule ambaye alipanda, atafanya nini? Simulipanda. Simuliamuka mapema. End of quote. 
At another forum in Nandi County, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa continued the same divisive and insightful narrative as follows. Quote, Raisa Ako Pale Niko Hapo. Raisa Ako Pale Niko Hapo. Huyu Felix Ako Hapo. Mimi mnanijua msimamo wangu. Ya kwamba watoto wakiwa wengi, kuna wale kwanza ya kuangaliwa. Simnajua. Sasa huyu Felix Ako Pale, ndiye kuunganisha mawaya. Mambo yenu tumepanga. Mambo iko sawa. Chakula iko jikoni. Karibu kuiva. Watoto ni wengi. Chakula ni kidogo. Iko watoto ya nyumbani, iko wajirani. Iko namna hiyo. Na nyinyi mtulie. Chakula ikiiva, sisi ndio wenye kupakua. Na watoto tunawajua kwa sura na kwa msimamo. Hatuwezi kuwa confused. Kuna mtu hajui watoto wake. Na wiki inakuja tutatangaza hatua kali ile tutachukua na ile maneno tumepanga. End of quote. In addition, in September 2024, during a public rally in Nairobi, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made public utterances that incited other communities against the ethnic communities that live around the Mount Kenya region by stating as follows. Quote, Na mimi mkaniambia ni msaidie rais kwa kazi. Lakini nikiwa hapo kwa serikali, nikue pia nikichunga mambo ya watu wa mlima. Niendelee kuchunga mambo ya mlima ama nisichunge. Sasa hiyo kuchunga mambo ya mlima inaniletea matatizo. Ati naambiwa mimi ni mkabila. Mimi ni mkabila kweli. Nikichunga mambo ya watu wa mlima iko makosa. Iko makosa. End of quote. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's utterances throughout the past two years undermined the promotion of national unity in the context of Kenyan society's multi-ethnic demography. Clark, just pause for a bit. Honorable senators, just put your phones on silence. Please, proceed, Clark. Repeat. His Excellencies, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's utterances throughout the past two years undermine the promotion of national unity in the context of Kenyan society's multi-ethnic demography and multicultural diversity. In addition, they have the potential to alienate, isolate, and create disharmony among the various ethnic communities of Kenya. In summary, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's above-mentioned utterances over the last two years are impeachable offenses to the extent that they grossly violate Articles 10, 2A, B, and C, 27.4, 73.1A and 2B, 75.1C, and 129.2 of the Constitution, and Article 147.1 as read with Article 131.2C and D of the Constitution. Specifically, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's divisive and insightful public utterances over the last two years, A, are incompatible with the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, B, can stir ethnic hatred and, prom and promote ethnic balkanization of the Republic of Kenya, C, falsely alluded to an unexistent government policy to discriminate and marginalize the populace of the regions and tribes that did not vote for the current administration in the 2022 general elections. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground one, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground two, gross violation of Articles 147.1 and 152.1 of the Constitution Article 147.1 of the Constitution provides that the Deputy President shall be the principal assistant of the President and shall deputize for the President in the execution of the President's functions. In addition, Article 152.1 of the Constitution states 
that the Deputy President is a member of the Cabinet. On various dates throughout the last two years, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa undermined the President and the Cabinet and the effective discharge of the National Government's executive mandate by making unilateral public statements that were inconsistent with policy positions collectively adopted by the government. To illustrate, A, on or around 30th April 2024, the cabinet passed a resolution for the evacuation of people residing along the Nairobi River. B, shortly after that, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made a public statement opposing the Nairobi River riparian evacuation orders which the cabinet had sanctioned for public safety and climate change mitigation. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made contradictory public statements despite being a member of the cabinet and being assigned the function of superintending the Nairobi River riparian evacuation order. In addition, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has on several occasions throughout the last two years made public statements contradicting the President on critical matters of governance and the exercise of the President's functions as a symbol of national unity. To illustrate, in March 2023 at a public forum in the Nyanza region, the President said Kenya belongs to all, notwithstanding how people voted in the 2022 general elections, and that he would ensure the government does not discriminate against anyone. However, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, speaking after the President at another public forum, contradicted him by saying that Kenya is a company in which the provision of government services is based on shares. B, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has made numerous other utterances at public forums where he publicly restates the divisive narrative that Kenya is a company in which the rights of citizens are based on shares determined, determined by how various ethnic communities voted in the 2022 general elections. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's unilateral, divisive and insightful public statements are impeachable offenses to the extent that a. they undermine the effective discharge of the national government's executive mandate, b. they violate the doctrine of collective responsibility, c. they are equivalent to insubordination of the president which is incompatible with his constitutional status as a principal assistant to the President of the Republic of Kenya. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground two, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground three, gross violation of Article 6.2, 10.2a, 174, 186.1, 189.1, and the fourth schedule to the Constitution. That is undermining devolution. Article 10 to A of the Constitution provides that devolution is a fundamental national value and principle of governance. In addition, Article 6 2 of the Constitution provides that governments at the county and national levels are distinct and interdependent and shall conduct their mutual relations based on consultation and cooperation. These provisions are supplemented by Article 189 1 of the Constitution which provides that governments at each level shall perform and exercise their, function, their powers in a manner that respects the functional and institutional integrity of government at the other level. Under paragraph 7A of part 2 of the fourth schedule to the Constitution, county governments are responsible for trade development and markets as an exclusive function. Moreover, the Deputy President chairs the Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council, an essential organ for consultation between the two levels of government. On or around 20th September 2024, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, recklessly unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic, unlawfully interfered with the running of Nairobi City County Government by holding a public rally in which he incited citizens against lawful directives of the Nairobi City County Government on the planning and relocation of markets. Further, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa publicly disparaged the leadership of the Nairobi City County Government and its decisions. 
Moreover, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has interfered with the proper discharge of county government's constitutional functions regarding alcohol control and regulation. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's insightful and demeaning public statements and conduct are impeachable offenses to the extent that A, they undermine devolution, B, they undercut the functional and institutional integrity of county governments, C, they unjustifiably vilify and ridicule the leadership of county governments, especially the Nairobi City County Government. Consequently, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has grossly violated Article 6 to Clark, Ten just a minute. I realize uh, what you're reading is fairly long. His Excellency, the Deputy President, if you may will, you may sit, and when taking the plea, you may stand. No, Mr. Speaker, let me stand. You may proceed, Clerk. I repeat. Consequently, His Excellency, the Gadi Gashagwa, has grossly violated Articles 6 to 10 to A, 174, 186, 1, and 189, 1 of the Constitution, as read with the fourth schedule to the Constitution. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground three? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground four, gross violation of Article 161 of the Constitution, that is undermining the institutional and decisional independence of judges. Article 161 of the Constitution provides that the judiciary shall be subject only to this constitution and the law and shall not be subject to the control or direction of any person or authority. Many international law instruments, treaties and principles require the guarantee of the judiciary's independence and require all government officers and institutions to respect and observe it. In 2023, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa recklessly unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, and the need to respect, protect, and uphold the independence of the judiciary, made a scathing public attack against the Honorable Lady Justice Esther Minor, judge of the High Court of Kenya, and falsely threatened to file a petition for the removal of the said judge in gross violation of Article 160 five of the Constitution. The Honorable Judge had presided over a case in which His Excellency Rigadi Gashago was a party and had, in the lawful performance of her judicial function, ordered His Excellency Rigadi Gashago to forfeit to the state the sum of Kenya shillings 200 million, which she had found to be proceeds of corruption and money laundering. His Excellency Rigadi Gashago's public attacks against the judge are impeachable offenses to the extent that they undermine the functional and decisional independence of judges. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground four, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground five, gross violation of Articles 3, 1 and 148, 5A of the Constitution, that is breach of the oath of office and allegiance. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's actions and utterances outlined in Grounds 1, 2, 3, and 4 constitute a gross violation of Article 3, 1 of the Constitution, which requires every person to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. Further, the actions and utterances of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa grossly violate Article 148, 5A of the Constitution which prescribes the oath of allegiance of the office of the Deputy President that obligates the Deputy President to obey, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and all other laws. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground five, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Part B, serious reasons to believe that the Deputy President has committed a crime under national law pursuant to Article 151b2 of the Constitution. Ground 6, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes under Sections 13, 1a and 62 of the National Cohesion 
and Integration Act. Section 13 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act provides that it is an offense for any person to use threatening, abusive, or insulting words or behavior where the person intends to stir up feelings of ethnic contempt, hatred, hostility, violence, or discrimination. The section also makes it an offense to use such words or engage in such behavior when having regard to all the circumstances, ethnic hatred is likely to be stirred up. Besides, Section 62 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act states that a person commits an offense when the person makes statements that are intended or are likely to stir up feelings of ethnic contempt, hatred, hostility, violence, or discrimination. His Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa's persistent, inflammatory, reckless, insightful public utterances over the last two years, the details of which are set out in grounds one, two, three, and four, establish serious reasons to believe that he has committed crimes under section 13.1 and 62 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground six, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground seven, Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes under sections 45, 1, 46, 47A, 3, and 48, 1 of the Anti Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, and sections 2, 3, 4, and 7 of the Proceeds of Crime and Anti Money Laundering Act. For the past two years, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has inexplicably inex applicably amassed a humongous portfolio, uh, property portfolio estimated at Kenya shillings 5.2 billion, primarily from proceeds of corruption and money laundering. The value of the property and wealth that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has acquired over the last two years is incompatible with his known legitimate income, that is Kenya shillings 12 million per annum or thereabouts. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has acquired the above mentioned property and wealth using his two sons, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa, uh, that is Kevin Gashagwa, and Keith Ikinu Rigadi, that is Keith Ikinu, and other close family members and associates as proxies. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa and his proxies, especially the two sons, have used the following companies to massively launder money, conceal proceeds of crime, corruption, and benefit from influence peddling. Number one, Spiritway Limited, PVT-Y2ULDMKY, date of incorporation 14th of September 2023, shareholders, Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, who is director, stroke shareholder, stroke beneficial owner with 100 shares. Two, Fortis Viz Group Limited, PVT-MKUMAKEE, -E, date of incorporation 14th of February 2023. Shareholders, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa with 50 shares and Keith Ikinu Rigadi, 50 shares. Three, Grand Bypass Apartments Limited, PVT-5JUZEKL8, date of incorporation 11th of January 2024, shareholders Rigadi Gashagwa, director, John Mwai Madenge of 7676931 as director, Peter Njoroge Regeru, uh, number 4686103, director. Vipingo Beach Resort Limited, number C159289, shareholder with one share. Four, Kuruwitu Properties Limited, PVT EYUBKG83. Date of incorporation 26th of April 2023. Shareholders Vipingo Beach Resort Limited, number C159289. 
as shareholder with 1,000 shares, and John Mwai Madenge. Number five, the Anansi Collective, BN-JRCG76AG, date of incorporation 29th of March 2021, shareholders Keith Ikinu, regardless.